were designing an icon, a might of supercars of 19th years. What does it mean for a designer? For a designer, that means, first of all, to think. To think back what the original icon meant at the time and who designed it and how to translate that into the future. In other words, in order to look forward, we first have to look back. You know, who was the designer on this car? It was Mr. Benedini, an architect by trade, who really did a masterpiece of a car design job in the execution of the EB110. And how to translate this almost Bauhaus kind of quality into a new interpretation. This kind of homage approach for needs thinking first, you know, what makes the qualities of this car translated into clear stylistic uh, identity of a new icon. That we can see clearly here, starting from the front. Yeah. Well, you see that uh, a characteristic of the EB110 is certainly the small horseshoe that it had in the very beginning. We're also having a smaller horseshoe on here, even though it's not as small as the original, but it really evokes the small, uh, low front end of the EB110. We're also 150 millimeters lower compared to the Chiron uh, development due to modifications, just to get this stylistic resemblance in proportion and also in graphic layout. And you can also see that the Bugatti logo, just like on the EB110, is sitting outside of the horseshoe grill. Together with the, with the front face, you have another characteristic of the EB110 that the eyes are sitting relatively close together. And this is a new interpretation of this narrow-eyed look and still presenting a car that has ultimate width in present. And the perception is very, very, yeah, wide, very wide. And then you, the, the, the light up is very, dif is very different, but at the same time, similar. I mean, the, the effect is, is uh, uh, how do you obtain this? And this, this part, aerodynamic, is, is yeah. also inspired to the B. It relates back to uh, the interesting headlights on the EB110 for supercar uh, development at the time. It was fairly unique, you know. You see the, the air outlets left and right of the, yeah. of, the, of the headlamp. And the headlamp size was due to the technical possibilities at the time. And this always offers for a designer the possibility to, to bring in new technology and making performance uh, being followed by the form. Okay. In other words, here, this is more modern lighting technology and we can create a modern interpretation of the headlight theme, including this air channel that we have here that relates back to the EB110. Okay, and f for the side, I suppose, uh, one, one detail that I, I noticed first is this, this part, because it's inspired to the Super Sport AB. Yeah, this is such a clear graphic identity. You know, again, an element that I think Mr. Benedini and being an architect uh, encouraged to put uh, onto the car as a cooling device. And also here on this car, it is a cooling device uh, again. But the EB110 was a classic Italian wedge kind of supercar shape of mm -hmm. the time. You know? uh, and this also was repeated here. Normally, the Chiron attitude is fairly relaxed in belt line. Okay. But here we use the opportunity to create a new interpretation of the wedge form of the EB110 on a uh, Bugatti Chiron package. That we can see here, in fact, yeah, the line. See. The belt line being much okay. more wedge and, and, and the line of this really creating a wedge into the whole car. And what about the back? You, it was difficult to cover the engine. Uh, yes, exactly. When my engineers heard that I would like to create the resemblance of the glass cover of an EB110 also onto this project, they said no, 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 no. So I had to give them cooling devices. Okay. And this is what you can see here. Uh, these two Naka ducts here okay. on the roof. Okay. They also came from an initial development of the EB110 and we put them in and we can filter fresh air into the engine compartment and have an exit uh, here and in this taillight structure from the, from the engine uh, compartment itself. And also uh, tailoring to the temperature needs uh, of this power plant because we are also dealing with a 100 horsepower more on this car. Okay, and this is the reason why, of course, it's more open everything here. And, uh, and you play with the lights, in fact. Yeah, this is indeed another example of uh, form following performance. Uh, and the relation to the EB110. The rear end of the EB110 is of very graphical nature. You know, these pill shapes, again, this is Mr. Benedini at the time being fascinated with geometry and Bauhaus shapes. 
And this is the one-to-one -one graphic interpretation, just in a reversed and more modern statement. This is foremost cooling and cooling performance, and secondary is lighting performance. And you change also, I see, the, the distance for the, the, for the exhaust system, I think. Yes, in order to get more uh, performance into the car, we move the exhausts all the way to the outsides to offer more diffuser performance in the center of the car. Okay, okay. What about the, uh, the, the building of this car? I mean, you, you, will, you will produce 10 more? What it we will produce 10 cars. 10 cars. Uh, for a piece price of 8 million. Net 8 million. Yes. And of course, I imagine that you sell already everything? Uh, we are lucky to, to say that all 10 cars are sold, yes. Okay. Uh, one, last words, uh, one last word about this place, this special place, uh, that I think is quite inspiring. This is a, an old factory, yeah. but with an important relation uh, with your brand, a part of the history of your brand. How do you manage this in, in terms of in, is design interpret inspiration? Sorry. Yeah. We know that the EB110 and the whole story of this car was created here in Campo Galliano. And even though the factory now is uh, almost like a ruin, but mm -hmm. a very sympathetic uh, ruin, and done in a concept of Mr. Benedini at the time that is just quite outstanding, from a clean sheet of paper to produce a factory like this, and also to produce a car like the EB110. So we thought uh, this is a sign of respect to come back to this place, to be a guest here, uh, and show this, this new study about the EB110 out of sheer admiration of the operation at the time, even though today we must clearly say Bugatti is located in Molsheim where the original Ettore Bugatti premises used to be. Okay, so congratulations. Oh, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. Yeah.